Hello YouTube, this is Josh New Zealand. I'm going to show you a very cool little plugin that I made that allows you to animate something in uh, Revit without leaving the environment. So check it out, I'm in a 3D view in Revit, I want you to pay attention to that chair and um, that is a very smooth 24 frame animation that um, does not require any fancy software installations or licenses and it's available right now on GitHub. I'm going to show you how to get at it and show, explain to you the code behind it, how it all works. But um, but first I'm going to just uh, show you a couple of features of it. That's it, a um, perfect, perfect interpolation. If I rotate um, platform the departure platform there, you see the chair rotating along with it. If I uh, throw it up over there, you'll see um, the chair will rotate but only partially because it uh, rotates in proportion to its distance to platform A and if I I can uh, rehost that um, platform anywhere at all and it will understand where it is and it's, um, fly to that position so it is a perfect interpolation between any two transforms in any um, position or orientation okay cool um, this 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 tutorial is for coders and um, I hope you enjoy it. Please drop me a like, smash that like button, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. But now I'm going to uninstall that plugin, I'm going to um, install it from scratch and I'll show you how um, the steps involved to how to get at it. Uh, this plugin was originally developed for a um, lab in Sydney uh, built conference um, which, which was meant to take place in um, June of 2020. But according to uh, COVID-19 that was all cancelled and I uh, will, not, will not have the opportunity until next year in September, but it will still be in Sydney. Cool. Um, on Google, uh, type in GitHub and transform Josh. There it is. Um, uh, Josh New Zealand Revit, trans, uh, Revit Transformer Sliders, GitHub. I'm new to, um, I'm new to um, GitHub. This uh, package hasn't been in there for very long. I haven't used GitHub for about four years. I wasn't aware that there was um, an extension you could ex install for Visual Studio that sort of allows you to um, update GitHub pretty much with a click of the mouse and it's super cool. So I'll be using it in the future. Um, it's only 11.2 uh, megabytes and it takes no time at all to install. Way it goes. This will not work on any version of Revit earlier than 2019 because it uses a family that was initiated in 2019 therefore um, it will not work on to Revit 2018, I am sorry. The um, what, um, first thing we're going to do is draw a few entities on the construction template. Um, so the very, um, when we go new, uh, for new project, um, we will choose construction template, then draw one floor, then draw four walls, and that's all the geometric modeling we'll be doing. Okay, so here we go, new, construction template, and um, start with the floor, just one floor, uh, floor, draw a rectangle, pan back a bit, there we go, done, now walls, rectangle, and that'll draw four walls, bang, done, um, now go to 3D view, in 3D view change your view mode to consistent colors, and make sure that um, this uh, little thing's ticked out. So make sure select elements by face is crossed out because we do not want to be accidentally selecting the floor and the walls. So there's the tab for the um, plugin, C Sharp Playpen 2. It's called Transform Sliders, and that's the dialog box that comes up. It's a whole bunch of sliders that changes the transform. So let's, um, the first button on the top left there is called Place AGM, that stands for um, Adaptive Generic Model. If I place that right there, you'll see that it is a, um, a generic model with a reference point that you can select independently and a chair on it. Now that chair is taken just from the default um, pre-installed libraries that come with Revit. The only way I've modified it is that I made sure that the um, always vertical is deselected and work plane base is selected and that's the only way otherwise that is a perfectly ordinary chair. So let's start playing with these sliders. X. Um, stage 1. Moving. Easy coding. Let's transform that in the x-axis. Check it out. It's a very smooth animation effect in the x-axis according to that slider. 
This is a modeless form, so that means the form stays um, open, and it does not and, um, it does not obstruct my ability to pan and zoom inside the window. If I move in the um, y basis, sorry, y axis, there it goes. The chair moves in the y axis, and in the z, there it goes in the z axis, moving up and down. That's easy stuff so far. Stage two is still easy, but it's a little harder. And we're going to start rotating the chair according to the three bases. Now check that out. Check that out there. That's the transform itself, and it consists of an origin and basis x, basis y, basis z. If I transform, if I start um, rotating this in base with the basis x set to the normal, you'll see that the move chairs, uh, the move, the chair moves forward and backwards. And if you look at these, um, look at these numbers, you'll see that the basis x stays the same because it's the normal, and you'll see the other two bases changing. If I rotate it in the y basis normal. Um, like this, you'll see the chair moves from side to side. That's a side to side rotation in the Y basis normal. And in the Z basis normal, that's round and round. You play with these sliders, you'll start to understand how the transforms work. So that's forward and back, side to side, and round and round. Well, that's the way I think of it. And it's very simple. Um, it's, it's very simple. But you don't really understand something until you can manipulate it. So I've achieved that with um, stage 3 interpolation, very difficult. Um, well, it was for me. It took me 120 hours to do the code behind here, and I'm going to show you it in a minute. Um, but first, we need to place a couple of platforms to represent the departure platform. So that's platform AGMA, then platform AGMB. AGM stands for Adaptive Generic Model. I think we'll place, actually, I think we'll place AGMB right here on the floor not on the wall, we'll just start with something simple, just on the floor, and we'll start using the interpolate slider back and forth. Now that is an interpolation, but nothing fancy is happening there because it's not changing its orientation. Um, really uh, to do the coding behind that kind of animation you sort of just take one point, take the difference of the, uh, these two points and divide it by 24 for a 24 frame animation. But check out what happens if I just move um, B a little further away and I start rotating platform B, you'll see that the chair rotates, but it doesn't rotate in perfect synchronicity. If I bring, if I interpolate it to 90% of B, that's 90% um, 90, 90 of the way to platform B, you'll see that the chair does almost rotate in perfect synchronicity. If I bring it over to back to platform A, you'll see that it only rotates a little, and that is a rotation representative of its proportional distance um, to B. So that's 10% to the way to B, that means it only rotates, that means um, it only rotates 10% as much when I rotate platform B. Now, so that's half of the interpolation, the other half is changing in the Z basis. So if I place platform B up here on the wall, um, we want to uh, see it change in the Z basis as well as rotate. You'll see that happening. I'll just go, uh, run through the cycle animation there. And it cycles through. That's um that'll cycle through five times. And you'll see that not only does it change in the Z basis, it also changes its rotation. And it does not matter how these things are orientated or where they are positioned. It will always be a perfect interpolation between those two points. So we'll stick, um, we'll stick a platform B over there. You'll see that it flies all the way over there in order to reach platform B. Um, um, platform B. Also, it doesn't matter where I stick platform A. We'll stick that one over here. And you'll see that it interplates between there and there. Of course, it doesn't understand that there's a wall there. It'll probably be better if I did that on the inside wall. That'll be more uh, visual. So I'll play for platform A, um, A there, platform B there. And you'll see the interpolation. There it is. That's much more smooth. It doesn't matter, so it interplates just between those two points, and they can be upside down, reversed. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll show you the code behind now. Um, th this kind of thing is useful for um, uh, movement of large bodies, like cranes and um, lifts. And um, any, any, um, if you don't want to leave your rivet environment in order to understand how objects are moving, um, this is a tool that could be used for that, um, because uh, you can. All the other tools like 3ds Max and um, Navisworks and Synchro all have animation tools, but it requires you to leave the Revit environment. Revit is my tool. I want to stay with the Revit and I want to take learnings from an animation and design author right there and then without having to 
export something, re-import something, I want to learn from it right then, there and then. So let's have a look at the code. Um, uh, here it is. So this is it. Now I made a method. The method. Um, this is the core of the code. It's quite. There's quite a lot um, to it, but this is the essence of it. And it's called my method underscore which took underscore 100, 180 hours of coding. And I would not have been able to achieve this without the lockdown that gave me the time to do it. The essence. Um, it's about done stages four. So you take the um, destination to departure platform um, transforms. Uh, there and there, and extract the Z, ba um, remove the Z basis from it in order to get a flattened rotation. So um, step two, um, step one is the extraction. Extraction. Step two is um, getting the rotation from the um, flattened transform. So we, if we remove the Z basis from the transform, we can now get a rotation that represents the rotation of the x y axis um, so there it is there and there of the two platforms now with the extracted z basis we're going to turn them into vectors and run them through a special function in uh, .NET called lerp so it's in the numerics library vector 3 lerp and you're going to run through those two vectors in order to get a result vector which is an interpolated, well, it's sort of an interpolated vector, but it's not a true interpolation because it does not involve the rotation. We tr take, uh, we get, uh, turn that vector, the resulting vector, into another transform, and we combine it with um, the recombination uh, of the rotations up here. So we take the two rotations and recombine um, and recombine them according to their uh, point in the frame rate. So that my float is the frame rate, and that's the proportion of uh, to which they are represented for each of the rotations, and, and gives you a resulting rotation, which is then combined over here to make a transform. And um, that transform is also run through another transform, um, and that gives you a resulting transform. It, it's uh, quite a bit. It's hard to explain, but it's all here, and um, I certainly need your help comment commenting it up. So please drop me a few comments if uh, I can explain it better in the future. I'd certainly appreciate it. Um, so that's it, and I hope that um, I hope that I can get some good feedback on this and um, see if there's potential to develop it further into. Um, Something that moves more than just a damn cheer, anyway. It's a proof of concept. It is a proof of concept. Thank you for your time. Please drop me a like, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you.